Welcome to MD Conversation. This module provides an introduction to pelvic organ prolapse, a condition where the bladder, uterus, or rectum bulge inwards into the vagina. Other modules are available that review details on treatments for this condition, as well as related topics. This presentation is written by specialists in this field, and it is independently produced. Please feel free to view this presentation as many times as necessary. You may also use the player on your left to repeat slides or to skip through them in any order you wish. To begin our discussion, let us review some normal anatomy. This drawing shows the main structures of the female pelvis. The bladder sits under the pubic bone and stores urine from the kidneys. Urine empties out through the urine channel called the urethra, which opens just below the clitoris at the top part of the vagina. The uterus, or womb, sits below the bladder. The part of the uterus that projects into the vagina is called the cervix. The rectum is right below the vagina and uterus. This drawing shows the hammock-like layer of muscles called the pelvic floor, which supports the organs in the pelvis, namely the bladder and urethra, the vagina and uterus, and the rectum. When these muscles and supporting tissues are weakened or damaged, the position and function of the organs can change. This is another drawing showing in three dimensions how the pelvic floor muscles support the bladder and urethra. Pelvic organ prolapse is just one of several conditions related to weakness or improper function of the pelvic floor supports. Other associated conditions include stress urinary incontinence, or leakage of urine with coughing, laughing, straining, etc., and incontinence of stools, called fecal incontinence. Pelvic prolapse describes bulging or pushing of the pelvic organs into the vagina. There are many different names for this depending on which organ is bulging inward. A cystocele occurs when the bladder drops down into the vagina. When the uterus drops down, this is called uterine prolapse. An enterocele is when the small bowel contents bulge into the vagina. And vault prolapse occurs when the top part of the vagina is weakened after hysterectomy. Finally, a rectocele occurs when the floor or bottom part of the vagina is weak, allowing the rectum to push upward into the vagina. Symptoms of pelvic organ prolapse include a sense of bulging, pressure, or heaviness in the vagina or pelvic area, pain, difficulty urinating, or difficulty emptying the rectum with bowel movements. As noted, there are many different names for pelvic prolapse, depending on which organ is bulging inward. A cystocele occurs when the bladder drops down into the vagina. These drawings show how the bottom of the bladder is pushing down into the vagina due to weak supporting structures between the two. When the uterus drops down, this is called uterine prolapse. An enterocele is when the small bowel contents bulge into the vagina. And vault prolapse occurs when the top part of the vagina is weak. Finally, a rectocele occurs when the floor or bottom part of the vagina is weak, allowing the rectum to push upward into the vagina. This may cause difficulties with bowel movements as stool becomes trapped in the rectum. There are two broad categories of treatment available for pelvic prolapse. Conservative measures, including behavioral therapy, physical therapy, and devices such as pessaries, and surgery. Treatment efforts may aim to achieve one or more of the following. To decrease the magnitude of stress on the pelvic floor through such things as controlling cough, losing weight, and improving bowel habits. To improve the existing pelvic floor supports through pelvic muscle training or surgery, or to provide new support structures using devices or surgery. It is important to understand that whether one chooses physical therapy or surgery for their condition, other measures must be taken to achieve success and ensure lasting results. These measures include education, lifestyle interventions, and toileting programs. Education is the cornerstone of all treatment measures. It is important to understand normal pelvic floor anatomy and function, what your condition is, what your treatment options are and how they work, and what the expectations of those treatment options are. Without this proper understanding, treatment may fall short of its potential. We applaud you for viewing this educational presentation 
and encourage you to make a lifelong commitment to your personal health and wellness education. There are several simple lifestyle changes that a person can make, which can have a big impact on pelvic prolapse. These include smoking cessation, weight loss, improving bowel habits, and physical exercise. If you have not already heard enough reasons to stop smoking, you may be surprised to hear that cigarette smoking has quite harmful effects on the pelvic floor and bladder. Smoking weakens the pelvic floor both directly by reducing blood flow there and indirectly by causing chronic coughing, which stretches and weakens these supports. Furthermore, smokers are two and a half times more likely to experience urinary incontinence than non-smokers, and all types of incontinence are increased. Products of cigarette smoke may directly cause overactive bladder symptoms, such as frequent and urgent urination, and they are irritating to nerve cells in the lining of the bladder. Finally, be aware that smoking is the single most important risk factor for bladder cancer. Obesity increases the risk of prolapse, stress incontinence, and bladder infections. Increased downward pressure on the pelvic floor leads to weakness of their supports and pressure on the bladder, while poor hygiene in obese women may result in bladder infections. Obesity may also cause diabetes, which, among its many harmful effects on health, can also cause bladder problems. Poor bowel habits are often overlooked as a cause of pelvic floor problems and incontinence. Chronic constipation and straining to pass stools weakens the pelvic floor, leading to both prolapse and urine leakage. Regardless of what pelvic problem you may experience, it is recommended that steps be taken to improve your bowel habits. These include increasing fluid intake, increasing fiber intake, and regulating one's bowel habits. Your family physician or a dedicated nurse or therapist can assist you with such a program. Specifically, proper bowel habits include an adequate fluid intake of at least 30 milliliters per kilogram of body weight, a diet high in fruits, vegetables, and grains such as lentils and flax, and a regular time for bowel movement and obeying the urge to have a bowel movement. If these measures are not effective, an individual approach with medication should be developed in consultation with your physician or nurse. Other measures which can lead to improved bladder and pelvic floor health include keeping a regular exercise program, controlling a chronic cough, and maintaining regular visits to your physician. Regular exercise improves one's overall health and sense of well-being. It also promotes proper hydration, which can improve bladder and bowel symptoms. Furthermore, exercise promotes blood flow to the bladder and pelvic floor, and it improves overall muscle strength and endurance. Chronic cough, such as with smoking, asthma, or acid reflux, also causes chronically increased pressure in the pelvis, which can weaken the pelvic floor and worsen prolapse. These conditions need to be addressed with the help of your physician, and many successful treatments exist. Finally, regular visits to your physician can help to monitor these and other important health-related issues. Pelvic floor muscle training focuses on increasing awareness and strength of the pelvic floor supports. There are several reasons to do this training. One can better learn to contract the pelvic floor muscles, which can help to strengthen the support of the pelvic organs. This can improve symptoms of prolapse and incontinence in women, prevent it from worsening, and help prevent it from developing to begin with in women who do not already experience it. In doing these exercises, a person can gain the ability to contract these muscles without having to think about it. For example, when a sudden urge to urinate comes on or prior to a sudden unexpected sneeze. This, in turn, can improve bladder control and prevent urine leakage. As an added benefit, the increased awareness of these muscles may lead to an increased pleasure during sexual activity. It is difficult to truly know how effective pelvic floor muscle training is, but it is generally felt that depending on the situation, some women can make at least a 50% improvement. Young women seem to do better than older women. Certainly, success with this type of therapy requires significant motivation and is a lifelong undertaking. Working with a dedicated nurse or therapist can optimize results. There are numerous techniques for improving pelvic floor tone and strength. The most commonly employed 
include pelvic floor muscle exercises, commonly known as Kegel exercises, biofeedback, devices such as weighted vaginal cones, and electrical stimulation. These techniques are discussed in detail in a separate module. When exercise alone does not provide satisfactory results, treatment options include pessaries and surgery. Pessaries are plastic or silicone devices that are inserted into the vagina to provide some support of the vaginal walls. As there are many different kinds and sizes of pessaries, it is critical to have them fitted properly by your doctor or a trained professional. They should be removed and cleaned regularly. Pessaries have the advantage of being a simple treatment that avoids any surgical intervention. They are also relatively inexpensive and they are safe. The major downside of pessaries is that they require careful fitting and some women simply cannot find one that is comfortable, stays in the vagina well, and effectively treats their condition. Compared to surgery, pessaries cannot cure the underlying problem, so they are less often recommended for younger women. Finally, and surprisingly perhaps, pessaries can occasionally worsen urine leakage by unkinking a urethra that is being partly kinked off by some associated vaginal prolapse. Hormone therapy is usually required to protect the vaginal lining and prevent irritation from the pessary. Surgical treatment is an option when a woman's condition is severe or is not responding to other measures. It is important to know that there are many surgical options available and every individual's situation is different. It is also important to understand the risks and expectations of whichever treatment you choose. Surgical options include traditional open operations where an incision or cut is made and laparoscopic techniques where surgery is done through a telescope placed in the body. Some surgeries are performed entirely through the vagina, while others are done through the abdomen. There are now so-called minimally invasive techniques using meshes or graft material to provide support. These materials are placed through smaller incisions than traditional techniques and avoid the use of numerous stitches to provide support. Finally, in some women, it may be appropriate to simply close off or obliterate the vagina whereas in most others, surgery aims to restore the normal anatomy. Having said all of this, there are obviously many factors that come into play to determine the operation chosen for an individual patient. These include their age, the severity of their condition, the types of defects present, the experience and preference of the surgeon, data on the long-term results of each technique, and the resources available to their surgeon. For most patients, excellent results can be achieved with surgery. However, as mentioned, it is important to have a clear understanding of the expectations. Many women, especially undergoing newer procedures, may mistakenly think that surgery is a slam dunk and recovery will be very quick. In fact, full recovery may take weeks or months to achieve as the healing process takes place, so one must be patient afterwards. Secondly, how a person defines success can vary a lot. A perfect result with complete cure of all symptoms and restoration of the vagina back to normal may not be a reasonable expectation for some women, especially with severe defects. The surgeon's goal is to improve symptoms and function and to improve a patient's overall quality of life. Finally, understand that unfortunately, even when an excellent result is achieved, it may not last forever. Surgery does not eliminate the need to maintain other pelvic health measures lifelong as detailed in this presentation. These can help maintain a lasting result. At the time of writing this presentation, unfortunately, there is still no perfect operation with guaranteed long-lasting results, and one cannot always know for sure just what the single best operation for an individual patient is. In summary, the pelvic floor supports the pelvic organs, namely the bladder, uterus and rectum. Weakness of these supports can cause urinary or bowel incontinence and or prolapse of the pelvic organs. Conservative measures and pelvic muscle training are the first line of prevention and treatment of these problems. When the situation is more severe or has not responded to simple measures, pessaries or surgery are considered next. When considering treatment, it is important to understand its goals and expectations. For the vast majority of women, successful treatment should be expected. 
These resources may help you find further information or support about your condition. This is just a sample of modern references discussing pelvic floor problems, available at your local medical library should you wish to do more reading on this subject. We sincerely hope that this module has furthered your understanding of pelvic organ prolapse. If you are concerned about any of the conditions described in this module, please speak with your doctor. Other modules are available through your doctor's office that discuss pelvic floor conditions in greater detail. And straining, etc. And incontinence of stools, called fecal incontinence. Pelvic prolapse describes bulging or pushing of the pelvic organs into the vagina. There are many different names for this depending on which organ is bulging inward. A cystocele occurs when the bladder drops down into the vagina. When the uterus drops down, this is called uterine prolapse. An enterocele is when the small bowel contents bulge into the vagina. Welcome to MD Conversation. This module provides an introduction to pelvic organ prolapse, a condition where the bladder, uterus, or rectum bulge inwards into the vagina. Other modules are available that review details on treatments for this condition, as well as related topics. This presentation is written through, which opens just below the clitoris at the top part of the vagina. The uterus, or womb, sits below the bladder. The part of the uterus that projects into the vagina is called the cervix. The rectum is right below the vagina and uterus. This drawing shows the hammock-like layer of muscles called the pelvic floor, which supports the organs in the pelvis, namely the bladder and urethra, the vagina and uterus, and the rectum, when by specialists in this field, and it is independently produced. Please feel free to view this presentation as many times as necessary. You may also use the player on your left to repeat slides or to skip through them in any order you wish. To begin our discussion, let us review some normal anatomy. This drawing shows the main structures of the female pelvis. The bladder sits under the pubic bone and stores urine from the kidneys. Urine empties out through the urine channel called the urethra. When these muscles and supporting tissues are weakened or damaged, the position and function of the organs can change. This is another drawing showing in three dimensions how the pelvic floor muscles support the bladder and urethra. Pelvic organ prolapse is just one of several conditions related to weakness or improper function of the pelvic floor supports. Other associated conditions include stress urinary incontinence or leakage of urine with coughing, laughing, 